Step into the spotlight of Sands Showbiz, guiding you through the stories behind the stars with Nigel Clarkson. Our guest today, Sean Smith. The Sands Showbiz, the podcast, the new podcast. We have the best guests on here. And this morning, we've got Sean Smith. Hello, Sean. Nigel, how are you, my friend? You well? I'm fine. It's a few years since we last chat, I've chatted. I think it's about three years or maybe two or three years. What have you been up to in those last two or three years? Oh, I've been up to lots and lots. I've been doing a bit of musical theatre in the time. I've probably released quite a few records since then. I mean, the debut album went really well, solo. Um, I, during the lockdown, I did um, another album called Swing for the 90s, which was a out-of-the-box kind of swing album of all 90s hits. Um, I've, my latest single is called Feels Like Forever, and that sort of brings me up to now. And uh, it was it's going really, really well. Um, it seems like, you know, people are really buying into what I'm doing, enjoying it, that, you know, um, and they seem to be sort of following me on my journey. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm really, really happy at the moment. Yeah. I notice you mix everything up, don't you? You do your music side as well as the theatre. And you're a bit of a multi talented guy, aren't you, really? I like to think so. I mean, others might look at it as like putting bread on the table. (laughs) 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 I think, yeah, like obviously the musical theatre side is, uh, is, is kind of like your bread and butter, you know, getting out there to the people and, and, and showing off your talents and performing and being part of a show is, you know, that, that's like your contract to, to some extent. Whereas yeah. what I'm doing with the music side, I mean, it's all intertwined, which is lovely. But yeah. what I'm doing with the music side of it is what I've always loved. It's more of like a passion and uh, a willingness to just sort of keep myself out there and use what I got from, years ago yeah. um to continue to um to sort of like keep, try and keep that profile up and at the same time um give give people something to to enjoy with me you know so it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's it's like a juggling thing with me at the moment i think if uh, the truth be told I would love to do more of it you know more more albums more recording more more getting out there solo yeah. um uh like like doing gigs as, as a solo or touring yeah. yeah that would be absolutely amazing do you, do you always want to be solo or do you ever do think of doing like a collaboration with anybody or would you fancy not doing that or is that not you I've, I've i've done a few collaborations in my time i did um i did a record that was re- really successful by our, our terms um uh, called verona with peter wilson and yeah. uh that's probably to, to this day it's still at the top of all of my uh <laughs> you know, all, all of my p- platforms, and uh, it's 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 a real it's it's been a song that's just kept giving yeah. to us. I've done some, um, but yeah, of course, I'm I'm open to anything really. I'm I'm kind of like a freelance artist, and if there's anybody out there that kind of like aligns with my vision and who I am, I'm more more than welcome to um, try and share the wealth, so to speak. And 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 you know, if it's something that the people love. Yeah. and uh, they can get on board with, then then great. So but, Dua, Lipa's, um, Dua Lipa's fine then, is it? If she comes along and just says, yeah, I want to oh, do a song with yeah. you. Uh, she, that's not a problem. <laughs> no, more than happy with that. I mean, I'm sure that would get plenty of traction. <laughs> but why she'd want to, um, why she'd want to lift up, a, you know, a, an X, uh, X Factor, 38 year old, I'm not, I'm not well, too sure. Never, but <laughs> You never know, do you? You never know. You never know. I was speaking to Rosella and uh, she was mentioned that she's on an advert with Everybody's Free. And that's a good example about how something can come out of the blue, isn't it? Just on a milk advert. Of course it is. I mean, these these things are incredible. Um, it, you just never know. I mean, I think the um, Sophie Ellis-Bexter uh, record yeah. becoming huge again is, is, is a perfect example of how you just never know what's going to happen in life. I, I've been shocked with a few things in my time where a record that I did randomly um and thought we'll just kind of shelve it ended yeah. up being on a on a bbc2 drama um and then you know sometimes when you least expect it something will just come out or you, your song will get used on some sort of playlist or and it will just shock you and think well you know i always knew it was a great record and now yeah. it's finally getting its uh it's it's opportunity. So you you never know in life, especially doing what I do. That's why I always try to keep making music and I keep staying in the game. And if it's not for me, 
it's for for those people that are sort of enjoying following my journey so it's yeah. you, you can never give up and you've always got to do what you're passionate about i was going to talk about promotion and that i mean how you promote yourself i mean there's so many various ways you can do it now with the internet because it's just out there in your face isn't it every there's so many different medias really isn't there now it's just really yeah. clogged up and knowing which one to do isn't it which ones do you concentrate on i mean I think because my um, Instagram sort of naturally built its way up, I tend to spend, you know, as far as that world is concerned, I'd probably give more more time to that. Yeah. But my Facebook, I've got like a, um, I've got like a fan page type one that I, I do often sort of check in on, but not yeah. as much as the Instagram. And my um, personal Facebook is just for like friends and family, really. So yeah, same, all the yeah. really personal things that are happening to me. Yeah. That we'll go out on that so then I'll know that the the people that are really close that because I really restrict that one to people that I genuinely know or yeah, work with here. so a couple yeah, of hundred so, friends um, in it on that one yeah yeah well <laughs> at one point I was really letting it build up and then weird stuff started to happen like people were st- <laughs> stealing my identity taking yeah. my pictures I was getting weird messages and uh, at one point, I ended up on like Tinder and Grinder. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh! Uh, people, right, using my, right. pe- people using my face, pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. And, uh, they won't use so mine. Thought, I'm, I'm safe there. They will never use my face. <laughs> no, come on! Get out of it. You're handsome. I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm too old. Um, I was going to talk about promotion. I was talking about promotion. I mean, I used to be in the radio industry for about thirty years, and it just seems to have faded now. And I don't know whether you do you have anything to do with the radio industry at all. Not a lot. I'll, I'll be completely honest. Yeah. Um, I remember, uh, I, I don't know, I haven't ever told this story, I don't think, but I remember first getting off the X Factor, obviously, you know, for those of your listeners that don't know who I am, which is probably a lot to be fair. No, a lot of people uh, know who you I, are. Uh, and everybody knows uh, who you are. It was it, um, well, your brother and sister difference. were, yeah, on the, on the X Factor. Was I right in saying that? Was it a family affair? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah brother remember and sister that. Band and the same difference. Yeah. That's right. That sticks in the memory because of that combination you know and that's what you need in it just a little bit of a spark like that anyway go back to the radio sorry <laughs> no, no no it's all right well basically all it was uh i remember so obviously we, we got to number 13 in the uk number 10 in in ireland which yeah. then meant they ha- that's on the official charts which then meant that they had to play us on the official charts yeah but if it wasn't for that we would never have got played on radio because it, we weren't cool so people were tending to um like boycott us which at the time in 2007 2008 radio was still quite pre- quite prevalent so yeah. um it was a real disappointment for us because you know the only medium that our it was getting out there was like on you know kids commercials or you know we we did a we went back and did a performance on the x factor which gave it a boost but then yeah. meant that there was it wasn't getting continually played so it wasn't gathering new <laughs> listeners so you, you had to hope that they were watching these things um and i remember i think it's i can't remember i think, I think who is it that owns capital is it actually table or am i getting mixed up um but anyway i, I remember them saying Lou, louis walsh was kind of like saying, these are going to be big. They're the next big thing. Trust me on that. They're going to be huge. And apparently, even though he was like slagging us off on the X Factor, it's all a bit of a pantomime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is really. But, yeah. Um, I remember whoever it was on Global, I think it was Ashley Table, saying to um, Louis Walsh, no, because they'll never get played on our network, you know, and, and I, I, I think they'll just be a flash in the pan. They'll be gone, you know, and like laughing about it. So they had this like, weird yeah. thing going on bit which then meant that he was gonna be like right i'll prove to you that my network is bigger than yours like it was kind of yeah. like an x factor against the global network thing and yeah. um they were at the time trying to prove that you know having uh you know having um these songs played on radio is what really gets out there to people and i do agree that that was the case especially at that time at so that when time, we yeah, weren't getting played yeah. on those kind of things it was uh it was really difficult and it it stopped it from getting off the ground whereas yeah. maybe there are other artists um and other groups and stuff that were around at the time that were getting really pushed on those kind of um yeah networks that, that it, it made a huge difference to and then they were connecting with the audience I, yeah. I i think it's the connection with the audience that is the biggest thing of all yeah uh, i think you all know that with, yeah. with your podcast and your radio stations yeah um it's uh and but you can't connect unless you've got that platform to be able to do it 
That's right. And then, uh, so, but I found when we had our opportunity on the X Factor, we were naturally connecting, which is why we, we ended up having more of a career out of it. And yeah. So, um, you know, it's just given that opportunity to, to, to land in that kind of way. And, and, uh, and yeah, but like I say, even with a small audience, it's, I will never, ever give up. I'll, no. I'll continue to just keep, keep building on what I've got. And, uh, those people that have stayed with me all those years, they, they're the beneficiary of, beneficiary of it because, yeah. you know, they're the ones that I'm doing it for. Yeah. So, uh, so does a theatre yeah. though still help then in promoting yourself? Like you said, you know, you've got to be a likable chap, haven't you? And go out there. So if you're doing a show or anything, I mean, that's going to obviously put you in the limelight to thousands of people. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, but thousands is, <laughs> you know, uh, no, but what I'm saying is, you know, of that thousand. So, so for, say, say for example, you do a UK tour, yeah. which is pretty, a pretty normal and natural thing to do. Yeah. Um, you're going to probably the maximum you'll play to is about 2000. Most, most theaters are maybe a thousand, 1500. Some are even less than a thousand. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's a, one of the bigger tours, the likelihood of playing upwards is, is higher. But it, I think even, I think the biggest theater in all of UK was, uh, I want to say, I think it's like Edinburgh. Right. And it's 2000 or 3000, maybe. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I wish I had these, uh, you know, these, these right. facts in front of me. But, um, and that is a huge auditorium, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, even if you fill that every single night, you're not going to get, it's going to take a long, long time. Yeah. Than if, say, for example, you were a prevalent uh, figure on TV. Right. But even if you look at the prevalent figures on TV, the people who are watching have to be. <laughs> Yeah, uh, have to like really buy into what they're doing and become a fan of theirs in order to be a proper follower. In yeah. order, and once you've got them as a proper follower, that's when that's when they they buy into what you're doing. So, like I say, it, say for example, like the last show I did was we were Rock You, um, the yeah. Queen of Ben Elton musical. Yeah. Um, I'd say the likelihood is we're playing to maybe fifteen hundred to two thousand a day. So there'll be the ones that don't really want to be there. <laughs> there'll be the ones. They'll be the ones that love um, love Queen and they're there just to enjoy the Queen music. There'll be the ones that, you know, are into musical theatre, but it doesn't really matter what, what it is that they watch. And yeah. But there'll be the ones that are like musical theatre fanatics that love, um, that love the performers as well as the shows. And, they'll, and then you've got a hope that you're the standout performer that yeah. they buy into, that they love in order to get one person that's <sighs> going to buy into what you're about. It's difficult so, to limit that. It really yeah, is hard not to crack. Yeah, which is when when I, I like to think, so say, for example, I've done a show and then I'll get maybe four or five followers afterwards that are like by, that love what I'm doing and all yeah. reach out and say something. I'm like, that's a huge success because yeah. – you know, yeah. of the people that are watching, um, that that's that's amazing that they're sort of like pointing me out as the person that um, as the, the the one that made them feel something when they were watching the performance, and then they're yeah. believing in you enough to feel like they want to come and follow your your career and what you're doing. So, and I think it takes really you have to be quite exceptional to be able to win over that small amount of people in that situation. Yeah. So what what's, I mean. what's the future hold then? How do you, how are you going to tackle the future then? I mean, with it's, it's so such a change in picture in it with the internet, right? It's difficult to know what to do, isn't it? Half the time, because something's fashionable and six months down the road, it's not fashionable yeah. anymore, is it? And they go, well, you can't follow that. trends. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly. It's like these trends are always coming up. I think TikTok's the new one. I, I haven't even bothered. I mean, I've, I think I've created <laughs> But I've, there's, there's a guy on um, my Instagram who's a lo- really lovely guy. Who, yeah. who, who says, you need to be doing this on, on TikTok and then he'll make me a video. And I'll go, oh, I'll put it up. What should I do with my hashtags? And he'll let me know. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. he's into it and he's doing quite well with it. Yeah. Um, so I started to put a few things up. But, you know, but considering I'm a novice, the numbers are actually pretty good. But I, I, it's not something that I can see myself really getting into. No. Um, and because because the Instagram built up relatively quickly and well and – and easily for me yeah um you know stick it seems that. like that's one that i'm good with yeah, yeah so you're probably I'll, best I'll sticking with that. with that aren't you really then the fads that are coming along you know there's a lot of fads 
I find, yeah, I find I just we're just stuck with them in Facebook there. of all the things and it gets slated a lot, <laughs> doesn't it? So, it's for the old codges, you know, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you on the, yeah, that's me then, isn't it? That's fine. But yeah, <laughs> it, it feels like that. But uh, it's just because I know what to do day quickly, you know, rather than messing about. And it, you, you seem yeah. to get like, people get like two or three social platforms that they really like and they just seem to stick with it, don't they? No matter what yeah, happens, yeah. really. <laughs> but that's that's a good thing, I think, in a way, because uh, the people who want to follow me know that that's where I'm going to be and, and they'll yeah. see a genuine uh, part of me. But it's the thing, I feel like everyone um, is putting content out there to, to try and, you know, get you to buy into what they're about. And it, it's like a trade-off, isn't it, a lot of the yeah, time? I, I follow certain people, they follow me. And, uh, you know, I just, just like to think I'm putting my a, a true reflection of who I am, obviously, you know, I think this is the thing with social media, isn't it? And it's something that people are always saying is that, um, you know, people only put the best part of themselves out there, yeah. which is why, for example, I'll deliberately put up things that make me look a little bit vulnerable at times. <laughs> but, uh, which, so people go, you don't see a lot of that. <laughs> so fair play to him for showing that life isn't all roses, you know? Yeah, that's good. No, I believe in that. I believe in that. And they say, people say, if you put 100% in all the time of what you're doing, that's the way forward, isn't it? Because a lot of people yeah. aren't doing that. So they're easy to beat, you know. it's uh, They want to know what you like, realistically. And that's what I've always done, yeah. is just be myself, you know. And you yeah. can't be any other, can you? And it, I think it works that. But it's, you've just got to get in the right media to make it work, as it were, where there's a lot of people yeah. who want to really listen, isn't it? You know, I bet there are so. I bet pretty much everyone out there has got something intriguing that people, other people looking in, would go, "Wow, that's amazing! I'd love to be like that," and would follow them for that reason. Yeah. Um. So you know, but it's just like, how do you, how do you, one tap into that, and two show show people that. So yeah. that they will will buy into it too and want to be want to be part of your journey. I, I guess that's the question. But uh, I was reading something the other day that said it's it's the why rather than the how am I going to do it that you've got to look yeah. at. Why yeah. am I doing it? I'm doing it because of this, 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 and it's really important to me. And so that will get you up and out of bed in the morning and get you uh, working on that vision. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I guess my my why is because. Um, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And it's, it's what I've done ever since I was young. It's part of who my identity is. And without it, it doesn't feel right. So, mm. um, and also it's, it's about serving, you know, yeah. I want to, I want people to feel something when they listen to my music or, or buy into whatever. Yeah. It's a good I'm, feeling. I'm doing. Man, and yeah. If you're making people yeah. happy in what you're doing or entertaining, whatever you're doing, it's, if you're bringing a smile to people's faces. I mean, my way of when I used to present on the radio was always, have a go at myself. You know, when somebody's a bit of a big head on the radio, that's the last thing I I hated that. So yeah, I used to think, yeah. I used to play myself down as a bit of a fool, really, and people could laugh at yeah. me, but they couldn't really pick at me because yeah. that's the way I was, you know, I was just being me, really, to be honest. And I think that's a good way. I think you've got, a, I think you've got yeah. a crack there. It's a good way. So what everyone's got a way. Yeah. And, and if that's what works for you, I mean, look, it's, you know, I suppose psychologically yeah. playing yourself down all the time is people might go, Oh, bit negative. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but they, but they love, but it's the thing. Everyone loves them. Those kind of people, don't they? And yeah. so that's probably part of why you're connecting because people, <laughs> yeah, it's, Unpredictable, a little really bit unpredictable, yeah. like that. Bung, bunging that in as well, and I'd come out with <laughs> some statement, and they'd think, "Oh my god, can't say that," <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then that used to do me well for like a couple of weeks, and then yeah. I'd do something just steady Eddie, and then it's something like click, else. clickbait in it, I suppose. A yeah, little bit. Now, yeah, now it's more about. Um, you know, the shock factor, especially yeah. on like the likes of YouTube, because I, I like yeah. YouTube because. Um, then I'm not getting anything I don't really want to see because the algorithm's kind of working out to what I like. Yeah, and so does. it always tends to be the same sort of things. So it's always um, Spice Girls and- coming up, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. No. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it locks into what I look at a lot, I know. and it gives me more of it. I'm so, only joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Spice Girls, yeah, I'll probably get offered a lot of their videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing the random stuff that you you look at, don't you? And then sometimes it thinks, "Oh, he likes that," and then I don't like it at all, you know. And it keeps yeah. going up. 
And you think, Maybe Ooh. you're watching it because you're like, this is this is horrible. Yeah. 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 And, and it thinks, oh, you watched it for more than 30 seconds. I'll give you a bit more of that. Yeah, <laughs> and you go, why am I seeing this? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it's a funny, funny thing, but it's, you know, so many people use it and are addicted to it for every... Although I am noticing... Um, just of late that it's, it's, it's I think eventually it will burn out a little bit yeah, it will. because I'll go on there say, say for example I'll go on there once and more once at night um, I'll flick through about two four or five photos maybe and then it's like oh you're up to date and I'm yeah. like well of all those people I'm following and all those yeah, followers yeah. I've got but that's not a lot of content really and then the rest yeah. of it is just like buy this game ad or whatever you know it's like yeah. i think it's, it's going to change like, i think there's I, a, I think there'll yeah. be a big change with ai and stuff like that coming out because I'm, I'm i'm like addicted to that ai i love yeah, it and i love yeah. do all the stuff it creates Interesting. but i think that's going to change a lot of things somebody said the other day it's the biggest change since electricity was invented and i can kind, yeah. kind of see that and a lot of people 100%. are going to get left behind and Our kids are using it now to do their uh to do the homework <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> it's like you, yeah if you're if you're basically a smart te- uh someone that can do stuff on the computer yeah. then uh you know you've got you can, you've got a lot of ways and benefits yeah, i do i get do away love doing that it writes books for me in a couple of hours <laughs> yeah. it's fantastic i've sold <laughs> stuff like that and it just does it it's great uh, yeah it I've, I've used it for sort of songs at the time i haven't actually recorded anything that's that's yeah. been made by that but i'll go yeah i mean it's a bit obvious and a bit yeah it is over rhyming there's nothing but you know you could take the base of it and get ideas and tweak it and definitely i don't know yeah uh, it'd be interesting I, I don't know that i'd want to cheat that way because i no. want it to be genuinely come from me but i think um, it's just a tool yeah. to to cut out all the laborious bits of you know whatever you do and then you you can just put the cherries on the top of the cake basically and i think that's the way you're looking yeah. at it it'll always be like a yeah. tool you know until they take over it is, man. and then giving us yeah, jobs from the robots i knew you were gonna say it. that yeah <laughs> 2040 <laughs> wasn't it they said yeah. that, that won't be long be like 30 percent decrease in in jobs yeah. which you know it's it's a sad thought for the uh for the kids how do we get onto this we're having i don't a, know anyway a debate totally about future so now. <laughs> let's think about happy things and what's coming up in the future do you go out do you go out gigging at all with the music with the songs and everything like that do you do any gigs well, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, the last one I did was a, uh, was um, I got back from We Were Rock Here and I did uh, the Energize party, and that was really yeah. good fun to do my own stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of gigs coming in for like the Pride events coming up in like August time. That's all. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, but at, the, at this moment in time, I, I think um, I don't know if it's sort of documented or whatever, but um, I yeah, I got married last year at the end of last oh, year congratulations and, uh, yes on that thank you very much it's going all time, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they say the first year is the most difficult and uh maybe that's true i don't know but she's no we're we're perfect honestly it's it's, it's oh, really it's lovely like that. but um, yeah. that's my main thing i guess now because i while i was doing uh we will rock you last yeah. year yeah, um, I did pantomime after that. By the way, over Behind Christmas you. that was a really, yeah. really. I know. <laughs> Behind you. That was, a... <laughs> yeah. that, was uh, that was like the last thing. Um, last one I did. It was brilliant. Like really good fun to do yeah. that. Yeah, it's but nice, like, like it? I say, for what you're saying there is exactly right. With, yeah. with the audience participation, getting involved, it's fun for the family. It's good for the kids. You can't isn't really it? go wrong. The kids love it, don't they? It's exactly really great. Yeah. And I've been doing best. it for years. I know, I know how to do it, and also yeah. it's like the pressure's off. I think with with We Were Rock, it's it's such a uh, like such a, a big beast of a show that you know it, your part could be anyone really. Yeah. So um, it's more about like what. So you've got to sort of fit in with what it's supposed to be, and so if you sort of veer off from that, it's like no, this is what the franchise is, and you have to do that. Um, right. So there's a lot more like, pressure. Whereas with Panto, it's, you, it's you. Yeah. So Wait, I what are you saying that, that for? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the little timer's come up now, as it does. It says upgrade now, <laughs> and <laughs> it's got eight, minute, eight minutes on it. Now, what I do usually at the end of the podcast, I ask three questions. It's like you're looking a bit. Dirty. What is he going to be asking me? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just three basic questions. But people obviously answer differently to these questions. Rosella's had a go at it. <laughs> Interesting to what type of car she's driving. Uh, people will be looking out for that. But yeah, I'll go for number one question. Right? Who's been? Who's been your biggest influencer? You know, like music wise. When you were younger, who did you think? Oh, they are just top notch. So that. 
Artists I always say the same thing. Artists, right. So when I was really, really young, one of the first ever albums I got was um, John Bon Jovi. Yeah. Um, the, the rock stuff. Yeah. I, I, I had his Crossroads album, I think it was. That yeah. was Early Doors. Meatloaf, w- weirdly. That, yeah. that same. Yeah. Um, Jim Steinman's music, absolutely unbelievable. But this was when I was really young. Yeah. And then it sort of grew into, I started to like um, Robbie Williams eventually. Yeah. And I, I'd say probably a lot of my influence came from him. I think a lot of people of, of my sort of age did go through that because he was just he was a bit bonkers and he was putting yeah. his whole self well, up there. So buy into he? things doing. Yeah. yeah, and I think that made him interesting. Character. And it's, 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 yeah, and it's the same with a lot of um, people that are like that. But this is the fear, isn't it? You know, it's... I, I, I'm not... I don't particularly follow him anymore and it's no. it's, it's a shame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind. It's like, I loved what that was because yeah. he was a bit crazy, a bit on drugs, unpredictable, you know, and you know I've just saying, got all like me. Things. That's it. You see, <laughs> over the hill, isn't it? And let's move well, on to question number two. Cool. We'll move on to question two. It's ticking away this thing. Yeah. Uh, what's your, what's your favourite car? Because I love my cars. You see, I'm I'm big yeah. into cars. What's your favourite car? Your dream car? Have you got it right now, or is there a car that you really like to to get? Because it's changing now uh, with electric cars, isn't it? I mean, that's rhubarb, isn't it? Yeah. Have you got an electric yeah, car? <laughs> no, it was always um, it was always Ferrari. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Because I remember going on one of those. Um, I got a, an experience thing for the Christmas, and the Ferrari was just like a different beast to the other two. I think I drove an Aston Martin and a Lamborghini as well. And I think the, the yeah. of the three, the, the yeah. Ferrari was ferocious, and the power of it and the unpredictability it was it was incredible. So wow. I'd still say Ferrari. But yeah, I mean, like the way that electric cars are going, uh, 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 like just for get, nipping about I think that I wouldn't mind getting a Tesla at some point people say yeah. since they, they're all right but then I've had other people say they're like the worst electric cars because there's not enough research behind them and you should go for a high on though or whatever yeah um, it's so not settled is it yet a, it's not settled down no, yet no but hydrogen might be coming in they're saying so maybe yeah. electric cars will come nil and void so yeah. you just don't know what to think or what to do and at the moment I'm quite happy with my Merc I love I love I've got Mercedes at the moment I absolutely love it yeah so um, sponsorship yeah. deal is hinging on what you said there you see <laughs> <laughs> you want arriving at the front door <laughs> yeah that'd be nice <laughs> alright we've got question number three yeah. uh, the final question what's your favourite must 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 have food like if you're having a snack what's your favorite snack that you you know always go to if you're feeling a bit peckish you think i'll just nip out and get one of blah blah what is it uh do you know chocolate <laughs> chocolate, chocolate with a coffee uh, chocolate with yeah. A coffee. yeah it all depends whether i'm feeling like um savory or yeah. sweet yeah. but my tendency tends to go to sweet and um I don't like myself for it, but if if you're talking about a, a treat, oh, chocolate, yeah, chocolate is a yeah. treat, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Isn't yeah, it and I try to try to limit it. So when I do have it, it's dreamy, you know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's good that. Anyway, it's been great having you on the podcast. Um, <laughs> we'll keep in touch with you. Find out what you're doing. I'll keep checking in if that's all right. And see what you absolutely know. thanks for having me on it's been i think we've covered other stuff other than just like talking about the music which has been really fun and interesting <laughs> and uh people will get to know, know a little bit more about you a little bit more yeah definitely. yeah but i think so it's on. probably good yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully i think it's gonna be good will, that. Uh, it. and i think people will keep on the, on the podcast because it's that's what i'm saying i'm asking the questions that other people will not ask i mean when you yeah. listen to the interviews on the tv so you can predict what they're going to ask them really can't you uh, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. you know, ooh, a bit cringy, really. The, the interesting thing, the, the thing that like they're most known for, they want to get to the truth of it and ask yeah. those sort of questions. Yeah, and you don't so, know um, about yeah. you. You see, that's we're trying to find out a bit more about you. We know that you drive a yeah. Mercedes car, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you want a Tesla. Keep it all if, day if they're long. listening, a Tesla, <clears throat> and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go from there I'm isn't sure, it? I'm sure they'd give me a free one because yeah, of all definitely. the promotion I can give them <laughs> yeah and, and we'll come along and make a video yeah. of it and that'll be it won't it eh? <laughs> but no I, I highly recommend the Merc honestly it's just kept yeah. going and going what I love about it is they've got a chain instead of a cam belt so it just goes and goes yeah. and uh, it's just just keep it serviced MOT t- the odd tyres here and there yeah. you know standard it's done me it's done me a treat for years so yeah, I'm over to that she always has a, she always has a Mercedes sister yeah. she just loves comfort it. Yeah. yeah anyway i'll let you go thanks, <laughs> thanks for um you know joining in with the fun today it's been great having you on the podcast as well and we'll list everything about you if that's all right on our website 
really good. Ah, it's beautiful. A place where people can just have a smooch if they're having a coffee and some chocolate. That <laughs> isn't the place to be, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, thanks I hope again. I love it as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sean, anyway. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Anytime. Yeah. All right. You Thank take you very care. much, Nigel. Thank you for joining us and sharing. If you loved what you heard, make sure to hit subscribe on this podcast channel to never miss an episode. Stay connected and become part of the Sand Showbiz family by following us on our social media platforms. See you next time.